start with the Alexa rankings. They have uh, 500 top sites that they rank globally. And I picked the 20 that you can fit up on the slide. Um, out of 20, 19 of them run some variant of MySQL. Nobody really runs MySQL in production without patches. Facebook, number two, basically started the web scale SQL project with Twitter, number eight, as well as LinkedIn, number 12. And what they do is they take MySQL 5.6 and add on hundreds of patches to it. And they use that as a base to build their own distributions of MySQL. Companies like Google, YouTube, part of Google, Wikipedia, they all run MariaDB, Wikipedia stock MariaDB, Google obviously a very customized version of MariaDB. And lately I'm sure some of you may have heard of Amazon's Aurora RDS service. Anybody heard of that? Use AWS? We're working quite actively with Amazon and Aurora as well. So out of the top 20 websites out there and some of the sites that don't make it include Tumblr, WordPress.com and so forth, they all run some variant of MySQL or most likely even MariaDB nowadays. We are a fully GPL v2 branch of MySQL. Some would call us a fork, but every month or every second month when Oracle makes a release, we actually make a merge. So you get the features that we have, plus the features that Oracle has fixed with MySQL. And a lot of the stuff we do is focused on community development, and I think that's really important for us. Communities are key to us. We are on Launchpad, we are on GitHub. It is as easy as branching the code base, forking it, and then saying you'd like a pull request submitted. And you don't even need to sign a contributor agreement today. We accept a BSD licensed uh, code. This is one of the main reasons why it's hard for web scale SQL features to make it back up into upstream MySQL. It's because you have to sign a, a contributor agreement. A contributor agreement is something that many corporate lawyers don't like people signing. We obviously feature enhanced. We spend a long time working on MariaDB. And we're definitely application compatible. So today you basically run MySQL, you run MariaDB, literally is a drop-in replacement. Your application will know no different. And we are definitely feature complete. We actually celebrated our fifth birthday on February 1st. We've been around now for five years, shipping GA releases. In that time, we've had over two million downloads, and our average is about 200,000 downloads from the website a month. This is not counting the um, downloads you get from Linux distributions and BSDs and so forth. In that short span of time, we've made over 88 releases of software in the server. 61 GA releases, 7 RCs, 11 betas, 9 alphas. Just in the past week, we made two more GA releases. So we're pretty active for a very relatively small team compared to the engineering prowess that Oracle can hire for MySQL. We've made many servers. In the last five years, the MySQL world has seen MySQL 5.5. MySQL 5.6, and the talk of MySQL 5.7. In the past five years, we've done 5.1, 5.2, 5, 5.3, 5.5, 10.0, a couple of Galera releases, and we're on track to release 10.1 sometime this year. It's already in beta. So, quite a lot of releases in quite a short period of time. Why MariaDB? Why LibreOffice? So, a, lot of, a lot of this has to do with vendor independence and freedom from vendor lock-in is truly important. MySQL has a single owner, a single vendor. MariaDB has a foundation to ensure that this sort of thing never happens again. It also has a corporation backing it. So you can think of us very much like the Mozilla corporation and foundation to that extent. There will never be another fork of MariaDB thanks to the foundation, and it's relatively strong considering that there are many other people supporting MariaDB outside of the corporation. I would say that the ecosystem development for MySQL 
is at its most vibrant now, all thanks to the owner of MySQL. Many people are working on branches and our forks. The community gets any feature you want, you think is useful, you can be getting it shipping in a, in a major release. I mean, that's how we've gotten contributions for things like multi social replication and so forth. And if you're a storage engine vendor like Topitech, making uh, new strides with indexes like fractal tree indexes instead of regular B plus tree indexes, or you think you want to make a NoSQL storage engine against, say, a Cassandra cluster or a, a Hadoop cluster, we provide the ability for you to do that relatively easily, and we ship all these engines that allow connectivity to other places. We like to be the middle that allows you to connect to SQL, NoSQL, big data storage layers. Pretty much all the early MySQL developers joined MariaDB in the early days, including um, obviously MySQL's creator, Michael Monty Wininius. We have many, many contributors, and the ratio is actually pretty impressive. You can go to Launchpad and check. For you to get comment right access, you need to be what is referred to as a Maria captain. We recently been migrating to GitHub, so there are a bunch of people moving here and there. And you'd realize that we have along the lines of about 25 external contributors, so people in the community, 18 who work for the corporation, and five who work for the foundation. So the split is actually pretty even and actually leading towards more con community contributors who are working at major web companies and, and so forth, actually pushing code to MariaDB. Besides the server, MariaDB also focuses on LGPL client libraries, or connectors as you may. One of the major ones we actually had to obviously make was the C connector, so you could build uh, things on top of it. Why LGPL and not GPL? Because when you go to dev.mysql.com and download a connector, you're getting a GPL um, client with false exceptions, which allow you to use the connector for false applications, but if you're going to embed it, you would actually have to pay a license fee to get past the GPL. It's part of the dual license. We give you LGPL connectors, so you never have to pay a license fee when you want to embed, be it for C, be it for Java, or be it for ODBC. And there are community connectors that are being built, and we will eventually, when they get to a mature level, bring them back into the project, mainly in the C++ area and Perl. C++ mainly for the LibreOffice project, because they also want a database connector for their base application. We also really like to focus on making the things you can get in MySQL Enterprise open. And a great example of why we do things in the open. We initially saw a thread pool in MySQL Enterprise. A thread pool is basically allowing you to open up a limited pool of uh, threads that can be reused. Because the MySQL model is to open up one thread per connection and then this is bad for CPU locality. We made a thread pool. We released it as open source. Another company, Percona, improved the thread pool and because they had a customer that needed some features and then we managed to take the features back again. This is something that I'm pretty sure many of you in the open source world understand. Having the code out there in the open makes a lot of sense. Many eyes also make shallow bugs. So when there are enterprise features that you have to pay for, you don't really know if you're going hit, to hit a bug or not. But with the open version, at least you know that you're getting many, many people using and or working on it. Our knowledge base is also fully open content and also license friendly, G GFDL as well as Creative Commons. You may want to check it out. But MariaDB has grown beyond just being a server and connectors. Recently we've also come up with a level 7 proxy that actually basically understands the MySQL um, protocol. It allows you to route connections or statements. It's a pluggable router. And the best part is, is you can also write your plugins relatively easily with C. And this product literally only became GA in January. And there's already another company that's started, um, started up and it's March now. So that's literally two months. And another company started making use of this and putting, it, uh, putting dashboards and so forth out there for you. It's called Maxware. 
And then we have people who want to use binary log relays, and you know the database will always have binary logs long before the system B world had. <laughs> and we, we like binary logs because we can replay binary logs on another machine. We can literally grab through them with a tool. So we, we really do like binary logs. And um, when you have multiple slaves, you can use MaxGear as a binary log relay server to actually push to multiple slaves. The possibilities with this are generally kind of endless. And the fact that you can also load balance your Galera clusters, so you don't have to use HA proxy is kind of handy. A very common use case for this is to allow the proxy not only to write to a MariaDB or MySQL backend, <laughs> but also another backend, say MongoDB, because you can actually write the queries, rewrite on the fly, and actually insert it into another database. And there are plugins already available for this. You can get MariaDB at MariaDB.org, and presumably all of you run Linux on your servers, and you'll find that it's a default in things like RHEL 7, CentOS, SUSE Enterprise 12, OpenSUSE, etc. In fact, Fedora was one of the first distributions that started shipping MariaDB 5.5. And recent releases of Fedora actually had that upgrade go from Fedora 5, uh, MariaDB 5.5 to MariaDB 10. And the bug count, we were actually really worried that users would complain that there would be huge amounts of bugs and so forth, but actually the bug count didn't increase. People are using MariaDB 10 as a drop-in replacement without having any issues. And, this, and these include apps that are built against it as well. So default my, Mari, Mari, MySQL in pretty much many of the distributions. When you ask for MySQL, you get MariaDB for free. So you may not know that you're already using MariaDB if you never started the client. We also really love participating in Google Summer of Code. And from the first year we, we participated, we got a committer. The second year we managed, uh, someone within the foundation managed to hire a person who came out of it. And we just got accepted for 2015 as well. And all this is students writing code that are shipping in current releases of MariaDB. Now you might be wondering who is using MariaDB. Most likely you're using it even without knowing you didn't put up your hands on it because pretty much all the distributions will give it to you for free as MySQL. You started up typing MySQL as well. Google. Google was migrating to MariaDB last year, but I'm very happy to say that throughout the most of last year, they've actually pretty much completed their migration to MariaDB 10. They funded the parallel replication work we do, and parallel replication is actually pretty handy because you can have parallel apply to your slave servers, or parallel apply even when you run. They also do code reviews. Generally, they all happen on public. They do QA, they do testing. And you know, we have to thank Edward Snowden for telling us that the NSA is hacking lots of um, servers. So Google's, Google has decided that they want end-to-end -end encryption for everything, which is why they've, on your search, they've turned <laughs> on HTTPS. And internally, they also like to run like, things encrypted. And they actually wrote a feature called table space encryption that allows you to encrypt your entire InnoDB table space. And then we obviously have to have a key management server externally. And they contributed this code for MariaDB 10.1. So not only are they consuming MariaDB, they're also extending MariaDB and making it better for you. And for the first time in the MySQL world, and MySQL will be 20 years old in May, um, we have actually got encryption for table spaces. This should be a huge, huge thing for enterprise use cases or anybody who cares about their privacy. And uh, early testing suggests performance degradation of no more than 10% on regular hardware. Not even modern hardware, just regular hardware. Wikipedia, they went from MySQL 5.1 to MariaDB 5.5 and also have started migrating pretty much to MariaDB 10 in recent times. Their initial reasoning was the better optimizer, and that still holds true. We also ship extra DB, though the extra DB in DB delta is getting a lot smaller. For Wikipedia, their major improvements were query times. They were getting any time between 4 to 15 percent uh, query time improvements, which would help things load faster. And why would you care if things load faster? I mean, in Singapore, you have one gigabit internet to your home, right? But if you think about 
the rest of the world where there are things like Wikipedia Zero and Facebook Zero where they actually basically tell carriers not to charge on mobile devices. Having a Wikipedia page load 15% faster means the carrier pays less, a user in some free third world country doesn't wait 15% longer and so forth. This is actually pretty impactful when it, uh, for real world use cases. Anybody here use Kakao Talk for messaging? Or is everybody a WhatsApp user? So they generally um, are very famous if you're in the, in the Korean or K-pop scene of space, if you like um, the Hollywood wave. They have a lot of active users. They started with MariaDB 5.5. They've also moved to MariaDB 10. And keep in mind, MariaDB 10 only became GA last April. So all these, all these migrations have happened within the span of less than a year. And not only are they actively using the server, they're also doing code contributions. So they've actually backported into DVD fragmentation, they backport things from web scale and so forth. So we not only have happy users, we also have happy developers. One of the um, interesting migrations that I've seen lately is Greens. They didn't just migrate from MySQL to MariaDB, but they actually ditched Oracle Rack is really expensive for MariaDB Galera cluster. And they claim that they were getting a lot better lowered TCO as well as uh, admin costs, and you don't need shared storage any longer. These people are in the e-commerce um, greeting card space, but we see similar things from people in the web hosting space, the telco space. People just love migrating to MariaDB. So, you know, Alcatel Lucent has makes use of our connectors and, and so forth. In the MySQL world, if you're familiar with it, a lot of, a lot of talk is about 5.7. 5.7 is not here today. Always remember that. 5.7 has been talked about since last year. It will be talked about again this year. And it may show its head end of this year or next year. We're giving you innovation today that you're going to see in 5.7 tomorrow. We've had a lot of these, these features already in 10.0. Multi-source replication is a labs release that you can get from labs.mysql.com. And we've been shipping it for a long time. It was contributed by Tava. It allows your multiple masters to write to a single slave. You can either use this for analytics, like Fun Plus Games, who has nodes in AWS Singapore does. You can use this for complete backups. You can do, use this for whatever you really want. We've been shipping GIS functionality, so you can actually now make use of latitudes and longitudes, and transformations, and get paths between them since MariaDB 5.3. We've shipped NoSQL APIs like Handler Socket that skip the entire SQL layer that write directly to InnoDB for create, read, update, delete operations. And we also provide dynamic columns, which allow each and every row in your table to have different amounts of columns, very NoSQL-like, so to speak. And that feature also allows you to get the output. You can query the output and get it back as JSON output, so you can use that in your web app relatively easily. Already mentioned power replication. We d we've done GTID better. Web scale SQL had to do GTID via adding a little table. The MySQL way of doing GTID, which is global transaction IDs, is that you shut down your entire topology and restart it. We just append the GTID to the replication packet so you can actually upgrade in production in C2. And we also ship the Connect Engine, which can now read JSON and BSON. And you can try this today. Not only does it read JSON, the standard, it also reads the MongoDB BSON. So you can actually read MongoDB uh, BSON files with ease today. Where do we go from here? Today, if you're playing around with the OpenStack worlds or any of these cloud worlds, they will generally recommend that you want to have something like Galera Cluster. Galera cluster supports fully synchronous replication, whereas MySQL and MariaDB only support asynchronous replication or semi-synchronous via plugin. Fully synchronous means that all nodes get the comment or no nodes get the comment. And we've made life easier. In 10.1, we've integrated Galera cluster into MariaDB. So now there's only one download. Not only is there only one download, you can turn on and off the feature as and when you feel like it, which is a, a huge bonus. So now if you have multi uh, geographical centered environments, you may want to have synchronous replication, say in Singapore, asynchronous to Tokyo, and um, 
maybe fully synchronous again to the US. All this is now fully possible with MariaDB 10.1. Not only can we encrypt table spaces thanks to Google, we also took in a contribution from another company called ePRI that allows you to encrypt just individual tables. So don't encrypt everything, just encrypt some tables. Now some of you may think this is not the, the best idea, encrypting just tables because it leaves all the control into the hands of an admin. But in many shops, the admin really does have control anyway, especially if you're small. We also invest heavily in instrumentation around the information schema, which is just a metadata engine as opposed to the performance schema, which actually has a performance hit. We really are focused on security. We have, we've put in the password validation plugins. We can now check your password against PAM Cracklip to tell you your passwords are too weak. Also giving you Kerberos authentication in addition to the PAM authentication that we already provide and the LDAP authentication. And we've also integrated pretty much every web scale patch that makes sense to the greater MariaDB environment. So generally speaking, today you can download MariaDB 10.1 beta. In five years, we've come pretty far for a relatively small team of developers. And it's largely thanks to the fact that there are a community of users, not only uh, users out there playing around with the database for, for fun, but also users in production from in, at large companies believing that we can do MariaDB. So five years, still a branch, not a fork. Check us out if you haven't already. With that, I say thank you, and I guess I'm open to questions. Um, we're a little tight for time, uh, so we have one for the question. So, uh, so technically, uh, could you give a quick comparison between uh, Firescale Enterprise uh, Cluster and uh, Glara Cluster? So you want a quick, uh, I need to clarify this quick difference between MariaDB Enterprise Cluster and the Galera Cluster. So MariaDB, MySQL Enterprise Cluster or MySQL Cluster Carrier Grid is something called NDB Cluster, right? That's a, that's a technical name of the storage engine. That is a, <laughs> that is a different storage engine compared to InnoDB. Um, NDB cluster requires you to have literally a minimum of five nodes. It doesn't allow you to run InnoDB. And when you want to do things like complex joins, it still happens over the network because of the uh, data model. Galera cluster does the joins locally and then, and then streams the, if, it's, if it's going to write anything, it streams the data after the commit. So, NDB cluster is used in the telco space quite a bit, and pretty much only in the telco space. Galera cluster can be used in the telco space and every other space. And the main claim to fame and benefit, I would say, is the fact that it actually runs in NDB. Now, nothing would be complete because there's always trade-offs. With NDB cluster, you could probably grow to n amount of nodes, and n is a number that is probably large. With Galera cluster, because of synchronous replication, if you keep on adding nodes, say you hit the you hit, hit 15 nodes and, and above, things generally start to slow down because it has to do the writes on every node. The, re the reads are the reads are good, but the writes will definitely slow down. And that's when you start using things like max scale or HA proxy because you'll send writes to just a few nodes and reads to all the other nodes, so you end up using load balancing. So that's a general quick comparison of, of both of both. I imagine this much more. But uh, yeah, <laughs> now is not time. Thank you very much. Uh, quick update on the schedule.